Okay, today we're going to make laundry soap. Why make your own laundry soap, you might ask. Well, laundry soap comes in plastic jugs, a bazillion of them, and um, it has a lot of toxic chemicals in it that get into your clothes, get into your water. You have a septic system. It's not real good for your septic system, and it's not that great for the environment, and it's expensive. It's actually kind of a racket. So I'm going to show you how to save all of that to be uh, environmental, but also to be frugal. Uh, homemade laundry soap costs about a penny and a half per load. So go and check the laundry soap you're using now and do a little calculation, see how much you're spending per load. You'll be shocked. Right, so we're going to start with the ingredients. You can buy this at most grocery stores, Fells Naphtha. It's a laundry soap. It says heavy duty laundry bar soap. There's another brand out there I've heard of called Zote, Z-O-T-E. We don't have it. I haven't found it in my area, but I've heard of others finding that. And if your area has a particular laundry bar soap, then um, get that. But this is pretty available, Fells Naphtha. It doesn't have that chemical in it. It used to have it. That's why it's called that, but it doesn't have that toxic chemical in it anymore. Um, you don't want to use the same kind of soap that you use for hand soap because hand soaps are made to moisturize your skin and not to strip all the oils out. You don't really want to moisturize your clothing. You want to strip all the dirt out. So you want specifically a laundry bar. You wouldn't wash, you wouldn't use this as a, a bath or shower soap or a hand washing soap because you dry your skin out really fast. So um, number one, make sure it's a laundry bar. If you, like me, make your own soap, you can make actually make a laundry bar, and that's what this is. It's a chunk of soap that I made specifically to make laundry soap out of. So again, I make wonderful moisturizing goat's milk soap, but I don't feel... Some people like to use it in clothing, but I don't feel it's the best. It doesn't get my clothes as clean as I'd like. So I make a, sp a bar of harsh soap that would be too drying to the skin, and it's specifically um, a laundry bar. Okay. So I'm going to work with the Fels Naphtha today since that's what is going to be available to most everybody seeing this. And the other ingredient you need is washing soda. This is the only brand I've seen out there, Arm & Hammer. There might be others, but the thing you need to look for is that it is washing soda, not the Arm & Hammer laundry detergent with baking soda, but it's actually it's just washing soda. It's detergent boost booster and household cleaner. So it's not a detergent in itself, but it boosts detergent. It's actually made by taking um, baking soda and heating it to a certain temperature for a certain amount of time and it changes it chemically. It's also a pool um, pH changer, and I can never remember if it's pH up or pH down, but it is sodium carbonate. So if you can't find this, if you go to the pool supply section of your local department store and look for the pH, it's either pH up or pH down, but it's um, sodium carbonate. And that's the exact same thing and it'll work the same. And it's about the same price. I think this might be a smidge cheaper. Um, just so you know, this is $3.49 for a box, uh, 3 pounds, 7 ounces. This lasts a long time. Um, don't stock up on this too much because it will draw moisture from the air in the damp weather and it'll be your whole box will be a brick. And I had that happen once and I tried banging it with a, a sledgehammer and sifting it and it was not worth it. So, all right. The other thing you need, which I already threw the box out, but um, borax. It's also another laundry booster. It's made from a mineral that's mined and it's... Um, sold also in the laundry detergent aisle, and it's in a box that's a little squattier and a little wider than this one. And again, it's not a detergent, it's a laundry booster. So you'll need that. Now what I do is I transfer these, which is why this box has already got thrown out. I transfer these into very tight lidded jars so that I don't have the moisture problem because this stuff lasts so long. And then um, what I do is... I just bought this box because we're out. And then I do this. This is very helpful. See? So when I ran out and I realized I wanted to make this video and I was out, I could take this off my jar and send my husband to the store and say, buy this. <laughs> so 
So that worked out really well. And then my borax one is already in there. All right, those are your tips for storage. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a liquid version. To make one batch, one two-gallon batch of laundry soap, you're going to use one-third of a bar of the Fells naphtha. So before you even start cutting this, make marks so that you're dividing this bar into approximately three equal pieces. It doesn't have to be that scientific. Now, I found because I'm a massage therapist and I use a lot of oil sheets, you know, the sheets from my business get a little oil on them. A lot of my clothes have oil stains on them. And I find that um, the one third of a bar wasn't quite getting the clothes as clean as I'd like. I've gone over to doing a half bar. So I'm going to make my mark there. All right. So, and then there's a couple of ways to do this. Good watchdogs. You can use a grater. Find the smallest holes on it. All right, boys. Hey, enough. I have a little piece here. And just grate it and try not to get any of your knuckles into your soap. So I don't care for that method. It's a lot of work, but if, you, if those are the only tools you have, it works fine, and you'll only be doing a third of a bar, so it's not going to be too bad. I use the food processor and the knife. You could get away with just using the knife, too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this chef's knife, use any sharp knife, and I'm kind of cutting maybe one-eighth inch slices. And when I do that, they don't cut into little slices. It shatters, because the soap is a very harsh soap. So it shatters into little chunks. Boy! So even if you didn't have a food processor, you could do this and use it like this without running it through the food processor to pulverize it. The only thing is that it's going to take you longer to melt it originally. So you'll have to you know, spend a little time with the pot on the stove stirring it. But that's doable. And the only tool you need is a knife. All right. So there, see how easy that was? Half a bar. And I've got this nice um, chunk, chunky soap. And then what I'm going to do is run that through my food processor with the chopping blade. This is a very old food processor. I've got two, and I tend to use this mostly for soap. But you can clean it really well. This stuff cleans out really well. So, ready? when you first open it, there's some dust that comes out. You don't want to breathe that. I would want to let this run a little longer, but I'm not going to make you stand there and watch. So I'm not going to do that. Right now, I'm just going to add the next ingredients. The next ingredients are half a cup of the washing soda. I have these lovely little caps. They're exactly half a cup, and I have them in all my containers. All right. And again, not scientific. Just, you know, that's a little over. That's fine. All right. Put my tag back on. And half a cup of borax. You don't, if you have a food processor, you don't even need to get the chunks out. If I wasn't using the food processor, I'd probably want to use my fingers with each spoonful and just pulverize those chunks of the borax. They do break up very easily. All right, and then I give that a little whir. All right, I'm going to leave that. I'll finish that up later. But just to let you know what I do is, so I don't have to go through all this whole process every time I need laundry soap. I make up, when I take all my equipment out, I make up a whole bunch of these. I'll get at least half a dozen bars, at least. 
and make up a bunch of little baggies. Um, and I wrote half a bar of Fells Nafta on here just to remind myself that I did make this one a little stronger. Um, and this has got the washing soda and the borax in it already. And I'll make up a bunch of these and store them in a, a container so that when I run out of laundry soap, I just have to pull one of these out. I don't have to pull all this out. And then I can do the next steps. Um, and then, just to save a little bit more on the environment, instead of tossing this bag, I put it back in the container so that I can use it next time. So I reuse these over and over and over and over. All right. So the next step, what I would do, if I pulverize this well, I would be putting that in a pan that holds three quarts is, is best. This is a two and a half quart. It will do. And we're going to put two quarts of water in here. This is just a standard mason jar to the top. It's about a quart. Now this this soap, this uh, Fells Naphtha, <coughs> is scented, and if you're sensitive to scents, as I am, you can see I'm starting to clear my throat already just from breathing in those fumes. <coughs> um, don't worry, it's so it, it's a little tough while you're making it, but this is diluted so much that it will not smell on your laundry. You will not smell the scent at all on your laundry. So even if you're sensitive to artificial scents. But for that reason, I'm switching over to the homemade so that I can have unscented, just for my own sake, my own health. But I use this for years, and it worked great. All right, so you preferably use a whisk. You certainly can use a spoon, but I find that using a whisk really speeds up the process. So this is going to go on the heat, and I'm going to bring it to a simmer. All right, so I'm just going to bring that to a simmer and stir it. You can, if you're in a hurry, you can stir it constantly. If you're not, you can leave it and just come check it every couple minutes. Do something nearby. You don't want that boiling over. All right, so here's one that I already did earlier. And just as you stir it, just keep going until it's very clear and you don't see any anything floating within the liquid. So anything you see floating within the liquid is going to be a little chunk of soap and you want that all dissolved. Now this has got our whole mix plus two quarts of water. We want to bring this up to two gallons, so we need to add six more quarts, and we need a container to do that in. There's two options you have. This is the one that I prefer. It's, um, I think oil or something came. Somebody gave me this bottle. It is. I always let my friends know when I need containers, and you wouldn't believe what I could, they come up with for me. But this, I think uh, vegetable oil or something came in this, and uh, I've been using this one over and over and over again for a lot of years. And this holds two and a half gallons, so it's perfect. So I don't have to fill it all the way. The other thing that works great is a bucket. So if you have just an open pail um, that holds at least two gallons, preferably a little more, because you'll want to stir this, preferably for the first day or so, while it's setting up. And uh, this I can shake, so I like this. And we'll do that. All right. If I had just turned the flame out under this, I wouldn't want to put it in my container because it's too hot. So I'm going to put a couple of quarts of cold water into my container first, just to protect my container. You know what? I don't think you can see them. You know how to pour it, though, so you can miss that. All right. So I have two quarts of water in here to protect my container, and I have two quarts of water in this pan. 
so that's four quarts total. There's four quarts to a gallon. I need two gallons. So I'm going to need, I've got one gallon now, I'm going to need one more gallon. All right, you're going to want to get this into this without spilling. So there it is. If you don't have a nice big funnel, you can make one. This is just, as you can see, a Dawn bottle that I cut the bottom off, and now I have a funnel. The only thing about this funnel is it's very shallow, and it won't stay put, so you got to hold it. Put that down. Normally I would do this lower in the sink, but I want you to be able to see. Alright, see there's a lot of soap left in this pot. So now I'm going to switch to warm water. And I tend to work in two quart increments so I don't lose track. If I did it at quart and then poured it at quart and then poured it, there's no way I would have any idea when I was at eight quarts. Save some of that soap, get it into the water, give it a good stir. There's quite a bit of soap left in there. Alright. Just need two more. be too fussy here because I'm going to be making another batch in this pan anyway. So. Alright, so this is my final two quarts for eight quarts. I just made myself two gallons of laundry soap or one, about a penny and a half per load. So we're going to use a half a cup of this solution in each load of laundry. And that's what I do, I mix it. And then I take this and I dispense it into containers for storage. Because I only have one of these and I like this because I can mix it quickly and easily. And then I save other empty bottles. I mostly use to take my vinegar bottles. This is an old bleach bottle. Um, when I first started, I, the only bottles I had, because I hadn't saved any bottles, was um, a couple of um, windshield washer antifreeze. Rinsed them out really well, but I used those, and then once they were, because the tops were too hard to get off, once those were done, I stopped using those. So this works a little better with a helper, but you're going to do the same thing. I don't think I can pour this without spilling way up here on camera, so you'll get the idea that this is going to be poured into here. You're going to be careful so that it doesn't overflow because you can't really see the level coming up. And you're going to watch for um, foam. The foam is going to prevent it from filling all the way. So when the foam gets to the top, it'll probably be filled up to about here. If you want to get th this into two one-gallon containers, you're going to have to sort of squeeze the bottle over the sink until the foam all falls out and then pour a little bit more until it's done. So the other little tip I have for you is, where'd it go? Here it is. This is what I use at my washing machine so that I'm not pouring out of these and taking caps off all the time. I will put about a gallon of this into this little pail and this just sits on my dryer next to my washer. And then I have this little one cup scoop and I can just scoop a little bit out into the wash and then I rinse it so that I can set it on the dryer without getting soap everywhere. 
the thing that you're going to find that's the most interesting, was, was the most interesting to me anyways, is that when you rinse this, it rinses very quickly and very easily. And when you go to rinse regular laundry detergent that you've been buying, it doesn't rinse out of things. You have to rinse and rinse and rinse and rinse and rinse. So what is that saying? It, it's saying that there's probably a lot of residue that's remaining on your clothing. Um, and uh, that stuff is toxic. You don't want that on your body, on your children, being absorbed by your skin. So this is a better solution. This is the best solution. So one day, if you can, learn to make soap. Homemade. This is very easy, too. Maybe I'll film it one day. This is a very good way to, to do your own laundry soap for a mere pittance. And my last tip for you is I do a lot of laundry. I'll probably do as many as 12 or 14 loads in a week because we're, like I said, we're massage therapists. So I tend to, when I sit down to make, or stand up to make laundry soap, I will do probably at least six gallons. And I have a whole bunch of little gallon containers that I save um, that I reuse. And that amount of laundry soap will be putting a lot of plastic into the landfills. I'm not putting any plastic in the landfills when I make laundry soap because this comes in a cardboard box, my washing soda comes in a cardboard box, my felt now says wrapped in paper, and this isn't wrapped in anything. So it's, it's also very good, not only good for your family's health, for your health, for your budget, but it's also good for the environment. So there's your laundry soap.